sourcing contact role association. This, this is quite a biggie. And I'm going to let you in on a secret here that you might be aware of or you, or you might not. This is what happens in ESDA Salesforce org when someone tries to save an opportunity without a contact role. You can probably see on the screen, error. You must add a contact role. What does this mean? This means that no salesperson in EBSTA can close a deal or get paid commission until a contact role is added to the opportunity. And again, all they need to do is click new, select the person that they're dealing with and press save, and then they can close the opportunity. I've spoken to organizations before that really encourage the salespeople to add the primary campaign source. And you'll see it on the screen here. And my argument is that they will never know what the primary campaign source is, or they might know 2% of the time, but it is so subjective. It's kind of like when you go online and, and you, you, you're applying for a service and they say, how did you hear about us? And guess what? 90% of the people that hear about that company hear about them through the first option because they can't be bothered to go through the list and work out how they first heard of the company. You can get people to add the primary campaign source, but actually if you want correct data and you really want to know ROI, I would strongly recommend that you don't do that. Now, just going back to, to previously, how do we force the contact roles? I'm going to go into Salesforce tech speak now. We simply added a custom field on the opportunity object called number of contact roles. We then created an apex trigger which essentially counted the number of contact roles against the opportunity every time there was a field change on the opportunity and then saved that down on the opportunity object in the new field. And then we added a validation rule that basically said if that, if that value in the field is less than one, then don't allow this opportunity to be closed. So this is the, the Apex trigger. This is written in, in Apex, which is Salesforce's own coding language. I'm not going to pretend to know a lot about what is going on here, uh, but I thought I would show it on screen so those that do can, can, can get a, a look at it. And this is the validation rule. And this is simply saying, if you look at the condition formula, if the state zone is closed one or the state zone is closed lost, and the number of contacts roles assigned is less than one, and the type is new business, then we, we fling up the error, you must add a contact role. So it's worth saying, well, the reason we've put the new business um, element in, in that formula is because we don't want to be forcing our accounts team to, to be adding contact roles for every auto renewal by, by credit card um, and things like that. Just recapping on where we've got to, and, and we're, we're running at 35 minutes, so we're doing quite well, and we're, we're on to the last section already, so I'm quite, quite pleased about that, and actually 98% of the people that started the call are still with us, so that's fantastic. So, recap, we know how to set up campaigns. We know how to automate campaign flow between Pilot and Salesforce, so that's really where, where one of the most powerful Pilot features comes and kicks into play. We've, we've gone over why we need to GA track everything, and let's not forget that using GA tracking, we can build automation campaigns in Pardot that retrospectively add people to campaigns or automatically add people to new campaigns in Salesforce. And we know how to force a contact role association. And it's just worth saying, if anyone's got any queries on that contact role association, if you email Katrina, my content marketing manager, who, who sent the invites out today, if you email her, I'll, I'll, I'll put a short document together to, to share that with anyone that wants to implement that, that themselves.